the heartbreaking death of Kobe and eight others, including his 13-year-old daughter Gianna, sent shockwaves around the world. The LA Times is reporting that retired Los Angeles Lakers basketball star Kobe Bryant has been killed in a helicopter crash. It happened this morning. The news wasn't real until you had confirmed it for yourself, and even then, it seemed impossible. It still seems impossible. What Kobe Bryant achieved in his basketball career also seemed impossible for many, but the Mamba proved his haters wrong many times during his 20 years with the Los Angeles Lakers. The debate about exactly where Kobe sits in the hierarchy of NBA legends seems silly now, but he's certainly in the very top, right next to Michael Jordan. In the game of basketball, in life, as a parent, Kobe left nothing in the tank. He left it all on the floor. Haters will still say that he was selfish and wouldn't achieve as much if he didn't play alongside Shaquille O'Neal in the first eight years of his career. But as Kobe said himself, haters are a good problem to have. Nobody hates the good ones, they hate the great ones. Exactly, Kobe was among the great ones. And even though many disliked them, one thing is for sure, everyone respected him. During his two decades long career in LA, he was hated and doubted many times, but always took the court and proved everyone wrong. So here are the top five times he did exactly that. Passing the torch. From day one, Kobe Bryant was compared to Michael Jordan and many found it ridiculous, disbelieving that there will be anyone who will come even close to MJ. Well, Kobe did just that. Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan faced each other eight times in the regular season, with Kobe winning five of those duels. You've probably seen the highlights from their first meeting in Chicago back in 1996, when Jordan unselfishly was giving advice to the 19-year-old Kobe. But here, we're going to talk about their last meeting. In March 2003, the Lakers hosted the Washington Wizards in the 40-year-old Michael Jordan. It was obvious that there will be their last matchup and the stars were aligned for something special it still exceeded the expectations. A fan waved a sign that read, Goodbye Michael, Hello Kobe, which is exactly what happened that game. Bryant was aware of the meaning of the game and started strong, scoring 42 in the first half, breaking the team record for points in a half of 37, set by Elgin Baylor against the New York Knicks in 1960. Bryant finished the game with 55 points, the most by any player that season, and just one shy of his personal best in that time. Often hailed as the next Michael Jordan, the 24-year-old Bryant made nine shots in a row and scored 23 consecutive Los Angeles points during a stretch of 5 minutes 42 seconds that began late in the second quarter. Michael Jordan had a decent night himself, scoring 23 points on 50% shooting. Asked if he felt he was passing the torch to Bryant, Jordan said he definitely has a share of the torch, he was hot. We tried to keep him on the perimeter. We went out on him and he was still hot. He kept them in the game the first half, added Mike. Dump it down. Michael, six well. of nine, he's got 15. Unbelievable. Another three for Kobe. 61 points in Madison Square Garden. Michael Jordan himself called Madison Square Garden a basketball mecca and played some of his most memorable games in New York. Jordan's every visit to New York was a spectacle and a real nightmare for the Knicks. His airness held the record for most points in MSG by an opposing player, having famously dropped 55 just 10 days into the return from his first retirement. That record stood for a full 15 years, but there came Kobe. On February 2nd, 2009, Kobe Bryant scored 61 points in the Lakers' 126-117 win over the Knicks. That Monday night, Kobe Bryant delivered a special performance at Madison Square Garden, and he unleashed the biggest game the building has seen by then. It's a blessing to do what you love and to have moments like this, Bryant said after the game. Bryant teased and pleased a sold-out Madison Square Garden crowd that took turns booing him and saluting him with MVP chants during an electrifying performance. He passed Michael Jordan's opponent record of 55 points when he hit three free throws with three minutes 56 seconds remaining and bettered Bernard King's mark of 60, said on Christmas Day 1984, with two more foul shots with 2 minutes 33 seconds to play. 
Bryant, who also finished with the highest scoring game in the NBA that season, left to a loud ovation after the 24th 50-point game of his career. It was also his fifth 40-point game in MSG, where the Knicks played their first game in February 1968. Bryant went 19 of 31 with an array of tough jumpers, powerful drives to the basket, and perfect foul shooting, hitting all 20 free throws. Then the Lakers coach Phil Jackson, who also coached Michael Jordan in his 55 points game at the Madison Square Garden, was aware that we all witnessed a historic performance. He was on fire from the start and finished the game almost the same. Lakers coach Phil Jackson said, that was a remarkable performance. Silence in Denver. The biggest scandal in Kobe Bryant's career was the Denver sexual assault, which began in July 2003, when the news media reported that the sheriff's office in Eagle, Colorado had arrested professional basketball player Kobe Bryant in connection with an investigation of a sexual assault complaint filed by the 19-year-old hotel employee. Bryant had checked into the lodge and spa at Cordillera, a hotel in Edwards, Colorado, on June 30 in advance of having surgery. The woman accused Brian of raping her in his hotel room on July 1st. She filed a police report and authorities questioned Brian about bruising on the accuser's neck. Brian admitted to a sexual encounter with his accuser but insisted sex was consensual. I didn't force her to do anything against her will. I'm innocent. The case was dropped after Bryant's accuser refused to testify in the case. A separate civil suit was later filed against Bryant by the woman. This was settled out of court and included Bryant publicly apologizing to his accuser, the public, and family, while denying the allegations. A couple of years later, Bryant publicly expressed his disappointment in his teammates who showed no support while he was going through this terrible time. But the real payoff came a few years later in the playoff series against the Denver Nuggets. It was Game 3 of the 2009 Western Conference Finals, with the series tied at 1. The Game 3 was scheduled for the Pepsi Center, where the Nuggets hadn't lost in the postseason. The home crowd was totally obnoxious towards Kobe, but it seemed like he enjoyed it. Kobe scored 41 points, grabbed 6 rebounds, and dished out 5 assists as the Lakers outscored the Nuggets 32-18 in the fourth quarter, en route to a 103-97 victory. This game is best remembered for the big three-pointer Kobe hit on J.R. Smith late in the game. First title without Shaq. Kobe Bryant won a total of five NBA championships during his 20 seasons with the Los Angeles Lakers. The first three came early in his career, winning a three-peat from 2000 to 2002. Being a young and still questionable, Kobe was in the shadow of his teammate Shaquille O'Neal, who back then was the most dominant player in the league and who got most of the credit for the Lakers' success. The three-peat was followed by two playoff exits, with growing feud between the two superstars. Soon after that, O'Neal openly demanded a trade, which eventually happened in 2004. The Lakers clearly became Kobe Bryant's team. The haters immediately predicted that Kobe will never win a championship without Shaq, while Kobe had only one thing on his mind, and that is to prove them wrong. Not too long after that, Kobe was on top again. He led the Lakers to another championship in 2009, and he can loudly say that he did most of the job this time. The Lakers beat the Orlando Magic four games to one in the final series with Kobe winning the MVP trophy. Bryant averaged 32.4 points and 7.4 assists in the series, not giving any chances to the opponent. Years later, after his retirement, Kobe was aware of the importance of winning it all without Shaq. Here's the thing, I get chastised a lot for being selfish, saying we just got to fit into a team. It's about winning championships, said Brian. I get it. I'm doing it, right? We won three straight. I got it. But I also knew that when my career is over, they're going to chastise me for the same thing. Oh, well, you're only great because you played with Shaq. I'm like, whoa, hold up. You can't have both ways, bro, you know? So it was important for me and Shaq to go separate ways because I didn't want people to use that against me. They still do. But it was important that I win championships without him and you get a glimpse of what I could have done individually had I not played with him. See what I'm saying? So that was a big driving factor, Kobe said. The last game. Before he called it a career, Bryant made sure once again to remind everyone on what he is capable to do, even though being 35 years old. 
In his final game on April 13th, 2016, he scored 60 points against the Utah Jazz, giving fans one last enduring memory of his greatness. Bryant was a five-time NBA champion over his 20 seasons with the Lakers. He was an 18-time All-Star, two-time Finals MVP, and one-time regular season MVP in 2008. Throughout his career, he was criticized for not passing enough, but in his last game, his teammates encouraged him to take over. Bryant had 38 points in the second half, 23 of which he scored fourth quarter on eight for 16 shooting. In the final three minutes and 20 seconds, Bryant helped the Lakers overcome a 94-84 hole by scoring 15 straight points for the Lakers, leading them to a 101-96 win. It was an epic performance that capped off one of the greatest NBA careers of all time. It was his first 50-point game since February 2009. I can't believe how fast 20 years went by, Bryant said as he addressed the Staples Center crowd. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. To be here standing at center court with you guys, my teammates behind me appreciating the journey we've been on, we've been through our ups and we've been through our downs. And I think the most important part is that we all stayed together throughout. And with that game, Kobe went to the legends as one of the best that ever played and surely, like the best, one in his generation. As he once said himself, it's the one thing you can control. You are responsible for how people remember you or don't, so don't take it lightly. He certainly did his job, and our job is to remember him like he once was. A truly competitor who did everything. Sometimes hated, but always respected.